Welcome everyone. Today we are talking files and folders. We're going to start with the uh, desktop version and talk about where the files and folders are saved on your computer because a lot of people ask about that. Looking at the desktop version, if you go to tools, you will see this thing that says set workspace location. That's where the desktop version saves all of your files and folders. And you set that up when you install the software. And a word of advice, keep everything there. If you move things, the software goes back to look for things in that location. And if it can't find them, you might get an error message and it will screw everything up. It makes some logical sense to keep everything under one umbrella anyway, but you can see how that works. The online version is a little different. It does not have a fixed location. When you want to bring something into a project, it will just ask you to point to it on your computer, and that could be located anywhere, which is a little more flexible, but it's up to you in that case. You can see in my Finder window, I have everything in my workspace location. I have a user library. Here I keep songs, projects, all of the MIDI sources that I use to create songs, etc. You'll see all my projects listed here, and this is the project I have open right now. There is a hierarchy of files and folders. It goes project, folder, song, and then the MIDI loops that make up the song and any WAV files you use to make accents. And you can see that right here. I have a project open, and then I have my series of folders, and within each folder, I have a song. The folders are good to use if you want to set up uh, and organize a show and make a set list or have them separated by genre or how you want to play them. And you're, you can move the songs around and we're going to look at how to do that soon. If you look at a project folder, it's called the BBP. And then if you go to the songs folder, you will see the folders. But you will notice that this software gives it an alphanumeric code name and within that folder, you will see the songs, and the songs here are labeled as BBS. Don't get confused. There is another type of song file, which is a .sng file. That is for a song outside of a project. Inside of a project, they're called BBS, and you can't move those around. If you want to see a list of those, you can open the config document here. And there they are. Here's the alphanumeric code, and here's the name that you have given it. And then within each folder, you will see a list of songs for that folder. And we can do a similar thing. And there we go. And you see how that works. If you go to municipalman.com, click on store, you will find a growing selection of MIDI backing tracks for your favorite songs and genres that come Beat Buddy ready, all at great prices. A fast and secure payment, an immediate download, and you are good to go. Right, so that's storing things on your computer. Let's look at how the files and folders are used within a project, and we'll see how we can create songs, create projects, and move the, move the parts of a project around. And we're going to compare the desktop version and the online version just to see if there are any differences. Let's create a project. Okay, and we'll call this new project. And you can see it has appeared right there. You can see that it populates it with the default folders that you need. And it has created a default folder initially. So that tells us that you must have a folder to contain the songs. You can rename the folder here. Or you can actually rename it in the config folder, which shows the relationship between those two. So if I change this name here to songs, and then I save it, and I close it, if I reopen the project, you can see that that is where the folder name is set. OK, 
Okay, once I have done that, I can create as many folders as I need for the project, but I'm just gonna stick to one right now. We're gonna create a song. I've actually been working on a beat for Big Hard Sun, which is a song I like to play. So I'm going to actually do that. And I'm gonna set the tempo at 140. And now I need to bring in a MIDI loop to play it. Uh, it's taken me back to where I was before, so you can see how the software looks back to where it was set in the past. And there's my MIDI loop, and I can preview that by playing the loop, or I can use the emulator. All right, and this song only has two parts. It's a pretty simple tune. Now, as you know, you can add fills or an intro or transitions, and you can use a WAV file to create an accent, and that will complete the song. And once you have it saved, hit save, and you're ready to go. And if we go to our project, we will see those changes represented here. So here's our folder, and here's the song we just created. And if I open up the config file again, there's the song I just created, and I can check the alphanumeric code that is being used. Once you have done that, it's a good idea to save all of the songs that you arrange as a .sng file. And the reason is you can import it into other projects very easily without having to rearrange the whole thing. So let's export this song as a .sng file and we can save it for later. Okay, it's already, I've already done it, so it's just gonna ask me to replace it, but you get the point. And if I go into my songs folder where I keep all of this, I have the song here, here's my .sng file, here are my two MIDI loops, and I can reuse those in the future if I ever need to uh, reestablish the song. It's a good idea to back up everything as well, which is always advisable with computers. You would hate to lose all of the work you've done. I want you to have this video for free. But if you've got two or three bucks lying around, and you can kick them over here, it helps me take time from my real job and do more of this. So find the link below, go to PayPal, select only the least of what you can afford, and just know that I'd really appreciate it. Let's do the same thing with the online version and see if there are any differences. We're going to create a project, and here's difference number one. It hasn't taken us to our... Uh, set folders location, so we're going to have to find it. And we also have to create our own new folder. So we'll call this newer project. And we hit select. And now it's going to ask us to name the project. And you can see it has set up a default folder and we can find that here in the Finder window, similar to before. All right, and I can name the folder. And I should be able to see that here. Here is the folder I've just created. And we will see that in the config folder uh, file if we open it. And there it is. Okay, and now we can create a song and we have to import a drum set to play it. Let's use the rock kit because that's what we used before. And there's our song. We go back to the songs and we can rename it. Whoops, should spell that correctly. And then I can populate the song with MIDI files I'm going to hit the part of the song, and then I'm going to go to this folder icon here, and that will allow me to open up and find the MIDI loops that I'm using. Uh, because I created these on my computer, it's a little different. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the capitalization. And I'm going to create a second part, as we've done before.
we'll call this the chorus. And again, we can use other things to finish the song if it's more complex. Okay, now here's another difference with the online version, which I haven't been able to figure out, but there seems to be no way to export a song from a .sng file. However, you can import them. I don't know why they did that. Maybe I'm wrong and I've just missed it, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So I would use the desktop version to create the song file, and if I wanted to import it using the online version, I can do that like so. So, a couple of differences there, but otherwise, the interface on the online version generally runs more smoothly despite a few of those extra steps, and the editor is a lot nicer on the online version too. So keep that in mind, and you can preview them as well here with these icons. You can save your project, sync it to your SD card, uh, just like you would the desktop version. Now, of course, as we mentioned before, you can add folders to the song, but in the desktop version, it's under Songs, New Folder. And that would work similar to the other one. You can rename it, create new songs within the folder. And on the online version, the Create Folder feature is right there, and it functions similarly. Well, that's our quick tip for today. Working with files and folders, there is a little bit of a learning curve to this, but once you get it, it's a powerful way to take full advantage of your Beat Buddy. If there is something I have missed, uh, any questions you have or comments you would like to make, please put it in the comments below and I will get back to you. And please subscribe and hit notifications because there are always new videos coming uh, down the road. And you might want to consider joining as a member because you get perks at the Municipal Man Beat Store where you can find uh, a lot of songs for your Beat Buddy. So you might want to visit there. The link is below. Thank you for joining today. We'll see you all next time. Take care.